artists and I'm sure you all saw recently, I was on stage with Chris Martin, which was so wonderful. That just happened so out of the blue. I've known the Co-Play Boys for many, many years and they were here in LA, so it was so lovely to be invited up on stage and to do that. But yeah, moving forward, always, yeah, love a duet. Um, I think it's one of the most exciting things as an artist to work with other artists. Um, it like writing as well as performing and, and duetting together. Um, I'm looking for some more questions here. Um, la, la, la. What's everyone doing today? Um, Christmas is around the corner, isn't it? I think someone's approaching with some questions I might have missed. Um, do I have any plans for the Latin American tour? We've kind of covered that. Um, I There isn't any firm plans at the moment. Um, I, obviously, I don't know whether we're talking Spice Girls or Solo, but the answer remains the same for both, to be honest. Um, want to, um, will, you know, continue to fight to. Um, but it's still so strange, isn't it? I feel like, I'm sure you can all identify with this. Like, this pandemic seems to rage on, you know, it's... Obviously, things are changing and evolving and, and certain things are becoming easier to do, but there's still a lot of uncertainty. And, and I personally find that really, really hard um, because I love my work and so much of my work is traveling and touring. So I get rid of that notification. Um, and yeah, it's just so hard. It's so hard to make plans, but then I think it's important to make plans because we need things to look forward to. But then I find myself in this weird place where it's like, I'm fighting to get excited about something because I might be disappointed, you know? It's such a weird time, isn't it, for everybody? For everybody. So any questions about touring anywhere and everywhere? I have my UK um, and European dates set for January, February with my solo record, Melanie C. And Spice Girls, we're talking about touring when we can beyond this situation, which I'm hoping will be many territories, many continents. Um, and personally for me, yeah, I will get out there and I will do the shows that I can do. Um, where is my favourite place to perform? I've been so lucky in my career, haven't I? I've toured all over the world. Mostly as a solo artist, you know, that's where I've got to more places. But then I've, as a Spice Girl, we've done UK, Ireland, the US many, many times, um, Europe. Um, I, I love any stage, anywhere. It was, you know, a dream was realised recently, getting on stage at the Hollywood Bowl. That was incredible. We saw Elton John there back in the 90s. It was like, it must have been 96 or 97. So actually getting on that stage was really, really special. Wembley Stadium is always, as a British girl, you know, growing up in the UK, looking at, like Wembley Stadium is probably our like ultimate venue. Um, obviously indoor arenas, the O2s, the Biggie. I love touring and playing all the, the, the great arenas all over England, you know, like, Birmingham, Manchester, getting up into Scotland, um, over to Ireland. There's so many great arenas and outdoor venues, but I think Wembley we kind of see as this, you know, that's the, the, the big one. And then somewhere like Madison Square Gardens in New York. They're the, the kind of big prestigious stages to grace, but you know, you know me, I like a, a tiny little club, uh, a little theatre, um, so yeah, I, I'm, I'm not fussy me, I just like getting on stage. How do you feel about Spice being number five in the UK charts? How amazing is that? Well, that's massive thank you to you lot. I'll take a little bit of credit yourself. I've been doing a bit of promo while I'm here in LA. I'm not gonna lie. Um, so yeah, that's fabulous, isn't it? I think the, you know, the charts this week, obviously massive congratulations to Ed Sheeran. Absolutely, you know, just doing incredible things you know everything he does is so brilliant and he's so successful it's wonderful to see him you know number one at the charts with so many sales um but for spice girls to be up there in that top five is incredible it's a anniversary album and there are some new tracks on there but obviously that's more fun their demos, they're not new, you know, they're not new songs. So that's an incredible achievement. So to you guys, nice one, nice one. 
Okay, favorite venue. I think I kind of covered that. I love so many different venues. I suppose Shepherd's Bush Empire has a very special place in my heart, which is in London, because I had my 40th birthday there and so many of my lovely friends came and performed with me. And I've just done a lot of shows. So it's probably the place I've returned to the most. So uh, yeah, that's, that is a special one. Um, what's my favorite food? Do you know what? I kind of, I, I like all kinds of different things. I like Asian flavors. You know, I eat lots of different like Asian cuisines. I like Thai food. I like Japanese food. Um, I like Mexican food when I'm here in LA, we've been eating loads of Mexican. Um, yeah, but you know, I like, I like trying new things. Lots of Italian, we've been going to lots of Italian restaurants. There's some really good ones here in LA. Um, so yeah, for me, I just like, again, as you guys all know, I do like to eat healthily most of the time. Um, but yeah, lots of different flavors. And it's great now. I think, you know, we have so many great restaurants. I found in London's amazing, here in LA is amazing. So you can eat really well, really healthily in lots of, men lots of different cuisines from around the world. Which was your favorite spice reunion? 2007, 2019. That's a no-brainer. I mean, 2019, obviously, apart from us not having our VB there, sadly, those shows were just off the scale. Um, you know, anybody who was there, they were amazing, weren't they? They were so incredible. Um, we got some more coming. Yeah, can you carry on? Um, so that, yeah, I think they, hands down, I think creatively, um, you know, Lee Lodge and his team did such an amazing job kind of realising our wish of creating that real nostalgia um, of, of the Spice Girls on that tour. And you guys were amazing. The audiences were just beyond. It was such a great shared experience. I think we felt it was the most inclusive of all of our shows. The biggest venues you know, that you can play, but it felt really quite intimate because we were just all having this super shared, wonderful experience. I think that's, I've got some more here. Let's have a look. Hello. Hello, Louise, little Pinky Lou. Um, experimenting with a new sound really paid off with the Melanie C album. What, what direction do you think you're going with the new tracks that you're writing? LA gave us Northern Star last time, so I have high expectations. Woo, yeah, me too. Um, you know what, I absolutely love my, I, I hate calling it my last album, let's call it my current album, because you know, we haven't put that to bed yet. Um, you know, really having a more electronic dance feel has been really fun. It was something I really wanted to express. I wanted to do a really upbeat album. Um, and I think I will continue in that vein to a point, you know, I still want to keep it really electronic, dance, pop, um, but you know, maybe have some more, um, some more peaks and troughs. I suppose Northern Star is quite a good reference point, really. Um, yeah, I, I just want to explore again. I've met some great new writers and producers on the last record. So I will continue to work with them. Big shout out to Bill and Ted, who are doing amazing. They're gonna be playing the Jingle Bell Ball, which is brilliant, so much fun. I've taken Scarlet before. So I'm so pleased for those guys. They're so talented and so lovely. They've been having a lot of success this year. We've got some sessions booked in the new year, so that's exciting. Um, but yeah, meeting more new people, obviously here in LA, keeping, you know, working. There's, there's so many, um, people I, I have yet to meet, you know? It's lovely to collaborate with new people, get new energy. So I will continue to do that, but yes, electronic, dancey stuff, maybe doing some more ballads, but keeping it atmospheric. You know, you know the kind of things I like to do. Nadia Faith. Hi, I think we've spoken on a little Zoom. Um, I hope you're well. Um, you seem to be having a great time in LA, but of course, must miss home, I do. If you could collide both worlds together to build your perfect utopia residency, I'm loving this. Which bits and pieces of LA and UK would you pick? Oh my gosh, that is, it's so funny. I went on a hike with Scarlett yesterday and we were talking about kind of, you know, this like fantasy perfect life. And I love to travel. I really, you know, hope and wish and pray it's not too long until we have that ultimate freedom to travel safely again. Um, I've had an amazing career and been able to do that, you know, experience so many different cultures and countries all over the world. 
Um, and we were talking about, you know, LA. Obviously, we love it here, but it is really far from home. And I think, like everyone, the things you miss are your friends and your family and I suppose your routine and silly things like, um, you know, the, the food you have, you know, the little comfort foods that you might have or the little restaurants that you go to. Um, so, yeah, so I miss all those bits and pieces. I think the ideal for me would be somebody inventing teletransportation. So you could literally just, you know, any British people of a certain age, as if you remember, um, I think she was called Mrs. Popoff. And it was in a show called Rent a Ghost, and she could go like that and be somewhere else. I think that would be a wonderful thing to be able to do. But definitely the climate here in LA, a nice bit of sunshine. I also love the mountains. I find them really magical. Um, and the kind of the vibe here, you know, there's. I think maybe the sunshine makes people quite pleasant <laughs> most of the time, apart from when they're driving. In LA, the driving style is so different to the UK. No one ever lets you in anywhere at a junction. Um, I mean, I live in London where driving is pretty hardcore, but people still let you in. And there's some pleasant trees on the road. But in LA, everybody's really pleasant on the street. And then they're really mean in their car, <laughs> which is bizarre. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, you see those little cultural differences everywhere, which is really funny. Um, so yeah, maybe a bit more driving etiquette British, maybe like a northern driving etiquette, like in the north of the UK, people are much kinder on the roads. Um, so yeah, that would be nice to transfer that over to LA. And then the pleasantries when you meet people, like in shops and stuff, everybody seems to be a lot more chatty and pleasant. Um, yeah, climate from LA. Um, but we, we kind of miss a little bit of the sarcasm. Um, our sarcasm is wasted at times here in the US. Um, let's see, let's go to some other questions. Hey, this is Graham. Hi, Graham. I hope you're good. Uh, when we finally get to see you perform live in February, will you be performing any of the new tracks that you are currently or intend on penning? Look at you with all your posh words. Um, cannot wait to see you back where you belong. I am so excited to get back on stage. I mean, yeah, you can't, you can't even imagine. It was so like, it was so weird doing the TV um, and I was dancing and you know, you know, I love dancing. That's kind of where I started out as a kid. I did all of my dancing, but I just really miss being me on stage, having a microphone in my hand. Um, so I can't wait to do that. It's so weird. I think lots of performers will identify with this. You know, we've been on stage so much less since you know all this weirdness has been going on in the world and it's like it's such a huge part of my identity that I sometimes I feel a bit wobbly because I'm like oh I don't feel like I have this like anchor to ground me and I feel like having that having that outlet on stage being able to connect with people being able to express myself is such a huge part of who I am that um yeah to not have that is is strange yeah I just feel like a little part of my life is missing so yeah I'm really really excited to get back on stage sorry I'm I'm skirting the question on I sorry Graham um yeah do you know what I'd like to perform some new in, in all honesty I'd actually like to get another tune out um before the shows um let's see if that's possible but yeah I think it would be fun I, I have I did start some writing sessions before I came over to LA and we got some really good songs so there's already a few goodies in the bag um, so I'm really excited to to perform them, to get your feedback on them, actually. I think you're going to like them. I love them. There were some, like, just re real instant winners for me. <clears throat> Let's have a look if you've got any more questions. Um, oh, healthy food on Insta. Lots of questions. Um, yeah, so I, I, like I say, I've been trying to be a little bit more proactive on social media. You know what I'm like. I have my love-hate relationship. I mean, I love being connected to you guys and sharing stuff with you. But it's kind of, I mean, anyone who does it, flipping heck, it's time-consuming, isn't it? I mean, oh, I've been so busy, obviously, when I was doing the show. So busy. But then there was great content as well. It was fun to be able to do silly little TikToks with Gleb and whatever. <clears throat> but yeah, I, can, I feel a lot of pressure sometimes to, to keep to keep giving you good stuff because I don't want to put any old shit up there. Do you know what I mean? Um, but the food, I thought that was, yeah, it was quite interesting. Obviously, while I've been here, initially, my 
um, you know, I was working so hard, like physically, that I knew I had to really take care. I mean, I take care of myself anyway, but it just seemed really important. And I was getting some food deliveries because when you're working like that, you know, you just want that thing taken care of. So that was really cool. I thought I'd share that with you. And um, yeah, I mean, it seems you, you seem to be enjoying them. I think it, I, I like looking what people are eating. I'm dead nosy. I'm like, you know, oh, what does she eat? I wonder what she eats in a day. Um, so it's been fun sharing those things with you. <clears throat> so good that you're enjoying it. I hope you see that is quite a varied and balanced diet. Um, I, I think I'm a bit of a cheat though, because I don't, I don't put up when I'm naughty, do I? You must all think I'm really, really good. Um, but yeah, there's definitely, while I've been here, lots of ice cream, frozen yogurt being consumed. Um, yeah, lots of snacking in between meals. So I, I do feel like I should share that with you as well, because I, I don't want to make out like I'm this angel because I ain't. Um, you know what? Let's while a little moment. I've got some questions. Talk about motherhood. Wow, that's something we don't talk about very often. Well, I'm in a um, <laughs> I'm at a place in motherhood which is quite challenging. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't really want to talk about Scarlett too much because that's her her privacy. But you know, we're getting into the teenagers, so any mums out there will appreciate. Whoa, it is tough. Yeah, things have changed a lot. And I think the pandemic's been tough on all kids. I mean, it's been tough on all of us. Um, but yeah, it's been hard to kind of navigate and manage. But, you know, being a mum for me has been, you know, so life-changing, which always sounds like a ridiculous thing to say. But anyone who's heard me talk about it will know that it's, it changed me in, in more ways than I ever imagined, you know? Um... I feel completely blessed. Can't even imagine what life was like before having a child. So, um, yeah, so it's super challenging, but super wonderful. Um, I want to give a massive shout out to my street teams. Actually, I must, I've got that a little note to do so because I don't want to forget. Um, I mean, there's so many of you out there now. So thank you for your continued support. You're absolutely brilliant. We've got teams everywhere now. USA, Asia, Italy, Mexico, Chile, Germany, Spain, Canada, UK and Portugal. So massive, massive shout out to all of you guys. I know a lot of you personally um, and I look forward to speaking to you all soon. What's your favourite swear word? Do you know what? <clears throat> I swear way too much. I think it's quite a British thing as well. Um, I think the F word is probably the one that's used the most. Um, it is really funny actually going back to motherhood when you become a parent you you come up with words in place of swear words and I've got some really ridiculous ones that make Scarlet cringe beyond um, will I be on Drag Race UK you can tell oh sorry I, d I, don't, I don't know I don't know why, why have you sent that question to me because I'm like I don't even know if I'm allowed to say so that answers your question doesn't it um, I absolutely love Drag Race UK and I have wanted to do it for a long time but it's always been um, slightly problematic because I know so many drag queens. <laughs> you know, I've been lucky enough to work with Sink the Pink which if any of you saw the show was amazing. Um, um, my lovely song dedicated to them, High Heels. Um, so yeah, so that leaves me in a little bit of an awkward position because, you know, personally knowing a lot of drag queens um, who appear on the show, it's a bit tricky to be on, on the on the thingy. Uh, sorry, I'm just looking. This is a funny, funny face, isn't it? Um, let's, someone's asking about Gleb. So Gleb was my dancer in I'm Dancing With The Stars and it was, it was wonderful dancing with him. Um, he is, really such a lovely lovely man he has two daughters so he bonded on that immediately he's a really good dad um and and he's tough and i think we had a really similar attitude to rehearsing you know we worked really really hard and we were quite hard on ourselves you know i think um you know maybe that was part of the problem on the show that we were we had such high expectations of ourselves and you know and he had such high expectations of me so i just feel like 
you know, we just put ourselves under a lot of pressure and maybe we didn't, we didn't have as much fun as we should have had. We were just, we, maybe we worked too hard. There was a little bit more balance. Um, but yeah, I, I adore Gleb. I'm looking forward to seeing him again soon. He is, he is a lovely, lovely man. Um, ooh, let's have a little look. Don't forget Brazil. How can I forget Brazil? How can anyone forget Brazil? While we're talking about Brazil, do you remember that that crazy trip that we had that time and I met so many of you lovely fans? That was insane, wasn't it? That was so nuts. Such great memories. One of my favourite memories of that trip. I think we were back in Rio, actually, doing um, some meet and greets. And I was there with Ricky and Ace. So Ricky's my MD and Ace is my keyboard player. And we were doing tracks and it, it was actually from, um, that was on the last album before Melanie C. So that was a um, version of me. And there was a song called Room for Love and we'd never done it. We'd never performed it live. But it, for some reason, it, it become a little bit of a favourite in Brazil. And all the fans started shouting, Room for Love, Room for Love. And I just turned around to the boys and we were like, yeah, go on. And so we just completely winged it. We'd never rehearsed it. We'd never played it. We obviously knew it. Um, and that was, that was such a fun, such a fun experience. We often talk about that. I am, um, you know what, talking about going on stage, actually, of course, I can't wait to get out and see all of you guys. But another thing I love is rehearsals. I love being in the rehearsal space, getting the songs together, you know, hanging out with the band. I think it's all that anticipation of getting everything ready to present to everybody is, um, is so fun. So I really, really can't wait for that. That's what the new year holds for me. So I'm going to go home, I'm going to see all my family and my friends over Christmas, and then get in the studio, start rehearsing, and get back out on the road. So 2022... I'm hoping, I don't want to say, I was like, 2020 is going to be the best year ever. We all know what happens in 2020, don't we? But um, I'm, I'm excited for 2022 because there are some really lovely things planned. Lots of live stuff. You know, that's what I'm, you know, putting my focus on. Live shows, festivals, traveling again, fingers crossed. And studio, new tunes, get the new album together. Um... Yeah, so 2022, um, I'm starting to get excited for. Um, come to Sydney in 2022. Fingers crossed, I'm hoping to get back to Oz. Oz is where I was last, well, LA was where I was last, before the world went crazy. And I had such a great time. I started my promo for the album, and then, yeah, we all got locked down. Um, how do you feel about all the younger fans you have? You know what? absolutely love seeing younger generations fall in love with the Spice Girls. It was funny because I've all, Scarlett's always been aware. Sorry about the pinging over there. It's just someone letting me know questions that I'm missing. Um, yeah, when Scarlett was little, I kind of introduced her to Spice Girls videos and, and um, music. And she just, you know, immediately fell in love with it. And I think lots of younger people do, you know, they discover the Spice Girls, whether it's through their mum or older siblings and stuff. And it's lovely. It's a lovely thing to see. And we saw it a lot in the shows in 2019. We saw like mums there with their mums and their kids and some grandmas. And it was, it was just amazing. It's lovely to see it can, you know, cross through generations. Um, let's have a look do we have any more questions our plans for see you next tuesday i saw <laughs> that yeah you know it was it was on the list it was vetoed from this album um for various reasons but you know biff and i have had talked about it in depth and it is so fun we need to find a way of getting it out there to you guys because it is a really really fun track um, plans to release solo albums on vinyl. I mean, this is something that comes up a lot. Um, yeah, you know, it will be a lovely thing to do. I think when the time's right, we'll we'll um, we'll have a look at that. Um, would you like to record a Christmas album? Um, lots of people do it, don't they? Um, there are lots of playlists out there. I think so. Lots of scope for Christmas songs, and they always seem to do well, don't they? Everybody does them. Yeah, I think that would be an interesting thing to do. I think that'd be quite a nice thing for the Spice Girls to do, to record a new... We've never done, like, a proper Christmas song, have we? Obviously, we've recorded, like, covers of Christmas songs, like Christmas rapping, and... and did we do Sleigh Bells once? Um, 
but yeah, I think we should, the Spice Girls should do an original Christmas song, don't you think? I think that'd be really fun. Um, maybe we've left it too late for this year. Maybe we'll do it next year. Um, Favourite Girls Aloud and Little Mix song. Oh, that's a good question, that is. Um, both bands have amazing catalogues. I'm a massive fan of Girls Aloud and Little Mix. Um, I, I kind of love everything Little Mix do. But you know what? I'm I'm going to go OG. I'm going to go Wings. Um, it reminds me of my friend Vicky. Um, we used to sing it at the top of our lungs um, when it was out there. Um, yeah, I love it because you know what I love about Wings? I just love the... Um, lyrically, you know, I just think it's so positive. Um, it's so empowering. But every song they've ever done is brilliant. Um, Girls Aloud. Oh, I mean... What's that one? They had loads of great ones as well. Sound of the Underground, their first single was wicked. Um, tips for skincare. This is interesting. I'm thinking maybe we've not done any skincare stuff, have we? I had um, loads of problems with my skin, like through my 20s and 30s. Um, with like a bit of adult acne and stuff. And it, oh, it's so annoying. Now it's all wrinkles. Um, so yeah, we could talk about that. I mean, that's something I might start going, looking into, delving into in social media. I truly believe within is important. I think stress is a massive factor with your skin. Um, hydration, Try. I need to drink more water. Actually, a little tip I'll give you that I do. Um, that somebody said to me, like when you're flying, obviously we're not all flying as much as we'd like to at the moment, but flying's really dehydrating. So I actually, I use hydration tablets, you know, like sports ones. Lots of people use them with cycling and stuff, but I have them on planes. Also coconut water is really good. That's really hydrating because it has potassium in it. Um, all those electrolytes. So along with your water, maybe some hydration tablets, some coconut water in there, which is good. Um, other tips for skincare, always take your makeup off. Um, I think that's the good one. And I tell you what, if you do your Christmas list, it is a good one, what I love. Um, a couple of years ago, I got a silk pillowcase. And it's, it's supposed to be really good for like your skin and your hair and all these things, it's like less drag. Um, but they're, they're lovely, so on your Christmas list. If, if your mum or your nan or your auntie or your boyfriend or your girlfriend or whoever is saying, what do you want for Christmas? What, what would you like? silk pillowcase because they're quite expensive but honestly you'll never go back to a cotton pillowcase like you know you wake up in the night you're like oh it's just so nice so that's my recommendation or if you don't put it on your christmas list get one for someone you love i should bring out my own silk pillowcase i'm doing a really good advertising job for them right now aren't i um let's see what else do we have here what does see you next tuesday stand for don't ask that because you know that's why you're asking cheeky Okay, can you still do a backflip? I very, very much doubt it. I have, <laughs> I am gonna be 48 in January, um, which is quite a daunting prospect. Can you believe it's eight years since my 40th at Shepherd's Bush Empire? What the fluff? Anyway, I haven't backflipped in a few years and I have to be honest, I do have some physical impairments um, which became very evident on Dancing with the Stars, um, one of which is my lower back. Um, so I'd be really nervous to do a backflip again. Unfortunately, that might have to be retired, which is very, very sad. Um, but hey ho, there you go. God, this is a long Instagram live, isn't it? I'm keeping you though. I'm not. I'm obviously not too boring. Oh, we just went up as I said that. That's nice. <laughs> Team Sporty Merch for the tour. What a great idea. Let's do that. If you would like to see Team Sporty Merch at, at shows next year, send me hearts right now. Let's see. Let's see the hearts. Yes. Loads of hearts. I think that's a great athleisure wear range. Do you know what? I would really, really love to do. To poor connection, reconnecting now. We're back, and you're back in the room. Um, yes, so I'd like to do that. Um, I'd also really love to do some products. We talked about skincare, but I'm like really into
if if that keeps happening, I might have to call it a day because it's really annoying. Oh, we've got loads more people on. Hi, everybody. Hi, welcome, welcome. Street team merch. Um, any are you doing any solo gigs in LA like you did in two thousand and seven? Um, I have a little bit of a situation here which is quite frustrating in that, um, it was really difficult getting a visa the way things are right now, and my my visa only really allows me to do. Anything connected with the show I'm here to do. Um, so doing a show would be tricky. Also, I don't have any musicians here. I mean, there are so many great musicians in LA. I'm sure I could get a nice little band together. Um, but I just I just don't think it's likely. Unfortunately, sadly, I don't think I'm going to be able to do any shows while I'm here. Um, hikes, 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 hikes. Well, LA is famous for hiking, isn't it? Um, much to Scarlett's disdain. It's just walking, which it is. In England, we call them walks, and we all kind of discovered them during lockdown, weirdly. The only time you go walking in the UK is when you're in the countryside or when there's a lockdown. When there's a national lockdown, we all decided to walk. But here in LA, they call them hikes. Um, it does make us Brits laugh because, like, the connotations of a hike is... It reminds me of, like, doing a Duke of Edinburgh, like, where you need, like, proper walking boots and a backpack and, you know, supplies. What's that stuff called? That mint stuff, Kendall Mint Cake. But here in, in LA, it's just walking up a little bit of a, a mountain. Well, not a mountain, just a hill, really. Um, but it's fun, and you never know who you're going to bump into. I actually bumped into a really, really lovely girl. She was wearing... It was so funny. We were walking behind her. And she was wearing a tour t-shirt from 2019. And Scarlett was like, Mum, you have got to go and say hello to her because that's just so funny. And uh, we went over and said hello. And she was, we did a picture together. She was so excited. But imagine going out hiking in a tour t-shirt and then bumping into the person, one of the people who's on your t-shirt. That was really, really fun. Um, so yeah, more hiking while we're here. Because you do so much driving. You're just in and out of a car. I'm like, I walk so much more in England. So yeah, so the hiking, hiking is good fun. Uh, what did you do for Halloween? Oh, Halloween was really good fun here. Um, we went up to Santa Monica upon, there's a street called 16th and there's, on one of the corner streets there, there's this amazing house and it's famed for like the guy who lives there goes all out, like completely decks it inside and out. He has actors jumping out and everything. So that was really fun. It was still a little bit limited. It was still a bit limited, obviously with the pandemic, people are, are still nervous. And um, so there wasn't as many, well, there was loads of people out on the street. There wasn't as many houses. Ah, oh, say that again. Just read it. Oh yeah, yeah, Biff said. Oh, hi Biff. If, Biff, if you want to go live, uh, send me a little request and we can, we can have a little chat about Spice 25 and maybe see if we can come up with some ideas for Spice World while we've got loads of people on. Um, yeah, what we're talking about. Yes, Halloween, Halloween. Oh my gosh, it was so funny. We ordered stuff on Amazon, it didn't come. Sorry, Amazon, I do love you, but your delivery here in the US. Honestly, Amazon UK, you are amazing. You literally, I can order something in the morning, have it in the afternoon. Here in the US, things often don't turn up. I'm really dissing Amazon now, aren't I? I mean, I, I think we all have kept them in business during the pandemic, haven't we? Let's be honest. And I don't think old... Um, What's his face is going to mind me saying, did I miss you again, Biff? What am I like? I need to keep my eyes open. Um, yeah, so that didn't turn up. So we ended up going to a Halloween shop on Halloween and there was like nothing left. So it was, yeah, it, I, I was kind of, I was appreciating everybody else's Halloween costumes. I didn't do great myself this year, unfortunately. Um, oh, Biff's at the gym. Go on, lads. I hope you're good. I love you and I miss you. And I can't wait to come and see you when I get home. Um, yeah, I was in the studio with Biff actually recently, which was really lovely. We always have such a great time. Um, and more sessions planned. Top five, Biff says. Yay! I know. How amazing. 25 years later. Um, so lovely. Yeah. So, so excited. I oh, love you too. Have a great session, Biff. And uh, yeah, I'll catch up soon. Um, I'm going to be back in the UK. I think I'm back like early December. Um, so I'll be back then getting prepared for Christmas. I'm going to be here for Thanksgiving, which is fun. I've done a Thanksgiving once before. Um, oh, Jono and Glyn, you're on too. My beautiful Sink the Pinker mates. If anybody wants to join and say a quick hello, let me know. 
did you another tattoo? I didn't another tattoo, no. Um, I think I've got enough tats, don't you? If I was to get another tattoo, what do you, <laughs> what do you think I should get? Any ideas? I quite fancy a smiley face on my hand. What do you think? Let's have a look. Collab with Natalie. Do you know what? That's that's a good shout. Natalie and I have discussed getting in the studio together. So watch watch this space. I love Natalie. And congratulations, she's done brilliantly with this album. She's so wonderful, Nat. It's so great to see her back making such wonderful music. Next show in Toronto. Love Toronto. I miss Canada. I haven't been for such a long time. Oh, loved, loved you on Sirius XM. Thank you so much. I really enjoyed that. I did a bit of radio stuff here. Um, I do like doing a bit of radio. Um, so that was fun. Thank you. I'm glad you enjoyed that. Get more tattoos. Spice ring tattoo. I think I've seen fans with spice ring tattoos. Um, okay, let's have a look at the time. It's quarter to 11 here. And I'm thinking maybe, should we start, oh, collab with Jessie Ware. Love Jessie, what an incredible artist and an incredible person. She's going on tour with her mum, I saw. Um, I think I might have to go along and see that because they're so much fun. I did Table Manners. If you haven't heard that podcast, go and listen. She's interviewed so many amazing people, one of them being me. Um, we had so much fun. Um, so go and have a listen to that because it, it was so lovely. Uh, I adore them and her music. I've listened to it a lot actually when I've been here in LA. It's one of my go-tos. Um, her last album was so beautiful. Um, it's just really nice. You know when you just like, I just want something, something that just kind of gives you a massive hug. That's what Jessie's album was like for me. Um, I miss you on Dancing with the Stars. I miss being on Dancing with the Stars. Do you know what? I hate Mondays because it's like, it's the show and I'm a bit like, I always feel a bit weird. Um, but good luck to everyone still in it. Um, Everyone's amazing. I was so impressed with how people go out there every week with like no dancing experience whatsoever and do what they did because, you know, I have danced most of my life and I found it really, really, really hard. I love you, jumper. You can get it. It's merch, mate. It's merch, isn't it? Online. Have you been to any drag shows in West Hollywood? I haven't, you know. I need to do that, don't I? Um, you got all five colours of the vinyl. I miss everybody's names. They're all so long on here, aren't they? So, <laughs> I don't watch it anymore. Um, oh, thank you. Someone said that myself and Jessie got them through the pandemic. That's Yeah, I hope my album was a source of comfort during the pandemic. It was, you know, it was quite upbeat and dancey. It was a bit of a bummer that way. It couldn't be like be out on dance floors. Um, but hopefully that will be, that'll change soon. Montreal misses you. I miss Montreal. What a beautiful place. Um, I, do you know what? I think I'm going to wind it up, guys. I don't want to be boring and rattle on. Um, so lots of things to look forward to. Um, I hope you're all well and safe. Thank you for joining me this morning, this afternoon, this evening, wherever you happen to be. Um, thank you for your continued support. Thank you for... Supporting this, that um, Spice album, which is brilliant. Um, of course, Spice World's going to be 25 next year. What's going to happen then? Hopefully, we'll have some tour dates. Hopefully, we can make some announcements soon. Um, any, anything, anything you'd like me to add? Over there, the chap who's just walked into the left. Hmm? Are we good? Can I say goodbye? It's, it won't make a sound because he doesn't want to be heard. <laughs> right then, my loves, have a wonderful day, Same evening, you whatever you're doing. And I will see you all soon. Um, I love you very much. Massive shout out to my street teams. Um, a massive shout out to all of you, wherever you are in the world. I hope life is treating you kindly. It is a weird, it's still a weird time. It's still so hard. Don't think you're alone in it because we are all feeling a little bit weird and a little bit wobbly, um, but we're in it together. So yeah, team sporty for life. So mwah, mwah, mwah. I'll see you soon. Thank you so much. I have to get myself out of this now, don't I? Without doing my end of meeting Zoom face. Save it, save it.